Do you know what it takes to become a successful engineering manager at one of the biggest tech companies in the world? In this video, I'm going to share my story with you and how I overcame all the obstacles that were put in my way. My name is Maria and I'm an engineering manager at a big tech company in the US. When I was first starting out my career, I had no idea that I would ever become an engineering manager and I had no idea how to reach a level of success. Wow! But through hard work, through dedication and a little bit of luck, I was able to put my dream into action and become an engineering manager. So in this video, I'm going to share my story and maybe inspire some of you to follow my footsteps. Before we actually dive into the video, I would kindly like to ask you to subscribe to this channel. I'm very new to all of this. I'm not an expert at all, but I'm still an engineer and I know how algorithms work and they are trained on engagement. So if you don't subscribe, if you don't like, no one is gonna see this and I'm doing it for nothing. So thank you so much. Let's dive right in. When I started at this company, I was an intern. <laughs> I was working in a product area, I was coding every day, and I almost didn't get an offer. The reason for that was all of this big tech company stuff, all of this efficiency and uh, lots of good people around you was very new to me. And I really needed to learn how to catch up and how to be a little bit more productive with my coding. Initially, I even struggled with basic things like source control because those were things that I never had to use in my student life. However, at some point it kind of clicked. I was able to close the productivity gaps, I was able to finish the project that was assigned to me, and I was able to get a return offer for a full-time position. It was a big deal for me, because I'm originally from Germany, which is probably what you hear in my accent, and this internship was the only way for me to stay in the United States. So I was insanely grateful when all of this happened for me. So when I joined full-time, I was working on a bunch of different product teams for the first three years. I switched tech stack quite a lot, actually. I was first starting out with backend engineering, then moved on to frontend engineering, native Android, a little bit of machine learning. And I was really just trying to focus on what was most impactful for my team at the time. One thing I learned during that process was going deep can help you a lot, but going broad also widens the way you think about tech and how you can be used on your team. After my first two years, I decided I don't wanna stay in the Bay Area anymore. I was living in San Francisco, doing the commute down, talking about tech all day and every day with everybody that I knew, and I wanted a change of pace. So I decided, let's move to New York City. So I moved to New York in 2019, I think in January 2019, and joined a new team. That team was very, very small initially. It was me and another engineer, and we were basically just trying to figure out what we're actually working on. We had a huge area to take care of, but it was only the two of us, so we needed to be a little bit more creative. This freedom actually helped me a lot because I'm someone who has a lot of ideas. I really want to change the product. I really want to see what happens and what users like, etc. So I was able to test a lot of my own ideas. Sure. Some of them failed, but that's normal. Your product ideas will not always succeed. However, at some point I was learning product sense a little bit more and I was understanding, okay, this is what users like, this is what users don't like. So my track record of successful projects grew the longer I stayed on that team. With this track record of projects, I also gained a lot more trust from my leadership chain, so the people that managed me. As a result, they put more engineers on the team. Most of them were more junior than me. So it was a great opportunity for me to mentor them, to step up and help them figure out what projects to work on. They also finally added a few more cross-functional partners. For example, suddenly I had a PM, suddenly I had a designer, a researcher, a data scientist. So it was a fully staffed team with, I think, 12 to 13 people. At some point during that journey, I was also asked to join performance reviews. This happens to some engineers because management wants a different opinion in the room, especially on projects that are very, very technical. While being in those meetings, I realized how much I actually liked it. I, as a person, care a lot about equality. So just sitting there with other managers discussing people's performance 
making sure they get calibrated fairly and they get the rating, the promotion or the raise that they deserve was something that really energizes me. And it's funny because for, for a lot of managers, when this season comes around, everyone complains that, oh, I have so many meetings, my whole calendar is full, I can't do anything. For me, I'm just excited. I'm like, yes, finally it's happening. Finally I can shine and uh, just try to get the best for the people in the room and the most fair outcome. So while all of this happened, I naturally became a leader, a tech lead actually on my team. I was mentoring and onboarding, I think six people at the time, and I was giving them projects. I was having one-on-ones with them every week. I was even doing career conversations with some of them, helping them to advance and get a level higher or even get a better rating. So more and more, I took on a manager role, even though I was an engineer, which was actually great for me because I could kind of test out the role and see if I liked it. At the same time, I was recognized by my management chain and at some point they said, hey, let's make you a manager. And since that happened, it's been a true journey. I've been a manager for almost three years. I became that role in 2020, middle of the pandemic. And I have a lot of learnings and a lot of things that did not go as planned. Because initially, when I became a manager, it was actually very, very difficult for me. Sure, I was doing maybe 80% of the work that a manager was doing before. However, I was not in the role 100%. I was not the manager on a team. People were not looking at me as a manager. And I have three reasons why this was difficult for me initially. First, I was now dealing with people full time. I was not dealing with code anymore. I think code is very predictable. It either works or it doesn't for people. If you have a solution for something, it may work, it may not work, but it also, most of the time, it's something in the middle. Sometimes something a little bit works for people and then you figure it out after. Also, people just have a very wide variety of thoughts and code doesn't do that ever. Second, I was a high achieving engineer. I always wanted more. I always wanted to create new products and launch new things. So I was really energized by getting stuff done. When I stepped into the management role, the success that I had in my personal life didn't come through myself anymore, it came through my people. So the road to success was much longer than I was used to. As an engineer, you work on a product, maybe for a week, a month, even six months, you work on that and then you have success moments in between. Oh, this little code piece works. Oh, the initial test works. Oh, you actually launched the whole thing, amazing. But as a manager, you need to wait much longer until something actually happens. For example, when you work with someone on a very tough promotion, like a senior or staff engineering level promotion, it does not take a month. It does not take six months. It often takes a few years and then it happens. So you need to be very, very patient with yourself, but also with others. Also, it was very difficult for me to talk all day and every day. I think as an engineer, the difference was I could sit in a meeting and just listen and see what other people do. As a manager, people look at you when the room is silent. It's your job to make the room not silent anymore. It's your job to make sure this meeting is actually successful and you have a strategy going forward. As an engineer, it's like, oh, okay, it's not my job. It's fine. Also, as a manager, you suddenly have so many one-on-ones that you cannot randomly cancel. You have to have those me those meetings. If you're sick, if you're going on vacation for two days a week, you have to reschedule all of those meetings to the other days. At some point I was talking nonstop, especially in a pandemic when everything was still online. I was talking to my camera. I was talking to my laptop all day and I was so exhausted at the end of the day. Now I think I'm more used to it. Also, I'm back in the office and I love the office. I can do another video on this. But when there's people around me, when I'm talking face to face, it's much easier for me now. To wrap this up, I'm still very happy as an engineering manager. Sometimes I do miss coding, but most of the days I just like seeing what people are doing and how they are growing, especially when you manage someone for more than a year. You see how they develop as a person, you see how they develop as an engineer, and you can actually help them reach their goals. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Thank you.